I'm anxious. Hi, everyone. It's me, Neil Brennan from Blocks. You're watching it. I'm not telling you the premise anymore. But people come on, they tell me their problems, and we, we everybody feels better about themselves because they have the same problems or worse. My guest today is a four time Golden Globe <laughs> nominee. Cable Ace Award winner. I've known this guy, I don't know, 12 years. I think close to like 16. 16, close to 16 years. Seller table. Yeah. Comedy seller table. Good guy, funny guy. He's here and he's Dan Soder. Hey. I haven't seen you in five years. We just discussed, and that's yeah. odd, and it doesn't feel like it, but it is creepy when you haven't seen someone in five years. You do see them, and then you're fine. Yeah, it's just checking back in. Yep, you're like, it's, oh, it's, it's like, like it feels it's like it, finding an old shirt. Yeah, but it, it like, feels oh, like shirt. a weird time traveling thing. Yeah, like I think everyone. Why am I fine? Uh, it you just it's just time is everyone changed. <laughs> everyone changed. <laughs> what I do you mean? It, I think everyone um, everyone shifted during uh, these last couple of years where yep. we didn't see each other. And then you see it and you're like, how did you change? You yeah. know, and people are like, oh, I did this. Yeah. Some people got uh, a lot more successful. Some people personally grew. I think like I'm more of the latter. I think I had a lot more personal change. What? It, well, good thing. Good thing you came to the right place. Yeah. Oh, my are God. Are you still with your girlfriend? Yeah, we're engaged. That would be Katie. Uh, yeah, Katie great. Nolan. Great, the great Katie Nolan. She's unbelievable. We're uh, gonna get married. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And you don't you say that knowing full well how how nauseating that is. Oh yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah uh, fucking kick rocks, dude. You don't like you know people that yeah. don't like hearing me say that, and I know mm -hmm. that. But it's yep. like it's um, it's been such a rewarding thing to finally find a person that you're like uh, you can be yourself around. Mm -hmm. Because I think I've spent my whole life trying to uh, be a people pleaser. Block. It's going to be a block number one, guys. That's a preview. Let's just do it. Yeah, Fuck let's it. just get into it. Block it. Yeah, block it. <laughs> but um, it's like uh, I, I got to, during these like years off, I think. Not years off, but like. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. That, really? It yeah. really did feel like. It was all. I didn't do jack shit. I did yeah. like a couple things over two years. And I, I, I really didn't, um, I hated my comedy before COVID. I put out the HBO special, which I loved. And then after that, I like couldn't find a groove. All the bits I was writing, I was like, what the fuck is this? What was wrong with them? They weren't funny. I didn't think they were funny. I didn't think they were me. I didn't think they were like, I thought I was being funnier on the bonfire. I thought I was being funnier on podcasts. I didn't think I was being like... The stand-up I was doing was like, ah, this is just, it's not good enough. And then everything shut down, and I kind of had to, like, see who the fuck I was. And then now I'm, like, back in love with stand-up. Who were you? I was a guy that was trying to get everyone to like something that wasn't authentic. I don't think I was, like, I think I was, I think there was a, a level of authenticity in, in what I was doing, but I don't think I, I think I was more worried about upsetting people and making them like me than I was doing what I wanted to do and what I thought was funny. And I think um, all my favorite comics uh, that I've grown up loving always are themselves in an authentic way. Like, through their sense of humor like this is what i find funny yeah and i didn't feel like i was doing that i didn't feel like i was doing that at all what was the people pleaser was it in your life too oh everywhere i didn't want anyone to be mad at me i didn't want any i didn't want to uh what it was is i was incapable of putting up boundaries of uh -huh. being like i need i i can't do this because i need time for myself like you if weren't would, a lot yeah i yeah, yeah it's the Just it, i realized three weeks ago that my needs are great yeah literally three weeks ago you know i'm going through something that just happened today I, honestly on the drive over here i was like what a perfect podcast to be doing as i go through this my grandmother is 96 years old and she is um she lives by herself uh she re she got COVID a couple months ago it's a weird thing when old people because my mom's 89 lives by herself and it's like a big it's like it's like having a toddler stay yeah by it's themselves. like yes a it's, nine year old it's what it is yeah is you're like oh can my i don't need a babysitter all right. Or we have a babysitter for yeah. You're like so. I, I she she has in home care. I don't let her just go like raw dog. I'm not letting her just like live alone like yeah. it's fucking summer vacay. I have I have people that come in. I have a service that helps her. But shout out to whoever created the term raw dog. 
Because it's the best. Because he's such a dirtbag. I mean, it, but he really it gives, nailed it. it. And I say he because there's no way a woman thought of it. No, no. Wo- or that is a grizzled woman. I mean, that's a real. You go get tested. Yeah. If she's like, oh, if you're she, gonna give it to me raw, yeah, dog. Yeah. She better have a dip in. Go. <laughs> well, she's like, oh, go get tested. Skin on skin, baby. And you're like, oh, please, you don't have children, do you? Fuck. Sweet lord. Of course I do. Yeah, I don't talk to them. But uh, my grandmother's 96 and. Um, my, you know, her, my whole family. That my dad's side's all dead, so I'm the only one that is there. I take care of her, and I've been, that's her side. Yeah, that's my dad's. That's my dad's mom, and so I've been like sending money and like taking care of her for twelve or thirteen years. She lives in this very remote shit town in Northern California, very hard to get to. It's like three hours north of San that Francisco. That was part of your condition for the money. I'll send the money, but you got to live in a real. But shit I need town. you to go to a real hard. You place need to, to get, get away. To. A real sad <laughs> place. A real Springsteen lyric of a town. Uh-huh. And um, she fell yesterday and hit her head and needed stitches. And then they sent her home. And I was like, don't send her home because I think we're in the process of now she's got to go to a facility. Mm -hmm. And she hit her head. They gave her two staples. And then last night as I'm going to bed. Just right. Just the idea of giving your grandmother staples. It's like like, stapling an old apple. Fucking dude. You're like, she's not a UFC fighter. (laughs) She's not going to heal. She has no idea what's going on. Will you call her the old apple from now on? The old apple. Oh, the old apple fell. Mm. Well, then they brought her home from the hospital and her neighbor called me. She fell getting out of the car and they think broke her hip. So now she's in back. So she left almost like a, like a bit. Yeah. Like she like left and then came out like a Chevy chase fall and then fell again. And now she's in the hospital and it's just like, I, I called my mom you know, and and I was just talking to her like, I, I just don't know what to do. And she's like, you can't do anything more. But it's the that people pleaser thing. You're like, well, I want to be the best grandson. Right. And you're like, well, you're incapable. I can't do that. There's no way to be the it's that competition's impossible. It, it's a weird thing with my dad's family where my, my grandmother never really uh, gives praise. But then she will at the last moment, she'll hit a buzzer beater. And she'll be like, I love you. you. You do a great job. And you're like, okay. But she'll let it go till you're like, there's no oxygen in the tank anymore. And then she'll be like, I love you. Thank you for doing that. And you're like, all right, I almost just completely gave up. But you, you know, it almost, it, it's, yeah. it, it's a manipulation technique. It's ki- the thing you have to do now, if you put her, it's kind of a tough love thing. No, that's, that's exactly it. It was like kind of working up the thing to be like, okay, well now she doesn't have say. She, yeah. she like fell twice. So now it's just like, well, now there's evidence. It's like a, you're arguing a court case against her, yeah. but she's not there completely. And mentally. she's mad at you for what you're saying. Yeah, but it's, it's like, a weird thing. I never would have guessed that old people wouldn't want to go to a. I mean, I guess it's obvious, but my mom didn't want to go to a retirement home because she didn't want to deal with the social aspect. And I was like, you, I, she's the nice one of my parents. I was like, you don't want to deal with the social aspect? Yeah. I thought I got all this from him. Yeah. Like Turns we, out you're a monster also. <laughs> yeah. And my grandmother, you know, it took it took a while for me to grant to really realize that my grandmother is, you know, everybody's a human, and which means they have good and bad qualities. And my whole life it was like, oh, she's the cotton haired grandma. Yeah. Uh she's so sweet. And then I you call her on Apple. Go ahead. Yeah. And then now you realize you're like, oh, she let my father abandon two families. You know, she like let him drink himself to death. There was a lot of shit that she did where I was like, yeah, yeah, starting to see the other side real quick. And it's, there is this feeling of like um, release knowing I don't have to be perfect for her or like this, this this idea of like, yeah, I can tell her you're going to a home and that's okay. That doesn't make me less of a grandson. That doesn't make me less of a family member to be like, we got to put you in a home. I know you don't want to do Look, it. Look, she doesn't fall getting out of the car. She, she bought herself three more months. She, she stays home. It really is. It's a career ending Sweetheart. injury. Sweetheart, I don't want to tell You're you. You're out. You're on yeah. IR. Yeah. We got to put you on the list, there, dude. We, you, we got to see if the if you can get insurance for your contract. You can't even. Yeah, we put you <laughs> in. She's Alan Houston. And I was, yeah, dude. And I was giving her like the Derrick Rose where I was like, you blew one knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Let's yeah, fix yeah. it. And then yeah. the other knee goes and you go, I, I Yeah, can't. like, come on. You know we you can't, can't give do me this. a style contract on this. Yeah. Yep. So it's uh that happened last night. And so now it's just like this morning I'm just dealing with that like 
call in the hospital to be like, how bad is it? What Will is you it? have to go wherever she is? No. I'll, uh, I think the hospital will transport her to a, a home. But will you know what home? Oh, I'll, I'll have to pay for it. Will like you with her approve insurance. it or you'll just Yeah, I'll like, have to approve it. I'll have to do all that. I'll have to do like. You're not uh, going to scout it though. I'm not going to scout it. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's like I can handle it um, via satellite. Uh -huh. in a way zoom it yeah i'll zoom i'll give me a zoom tour oh okay and that's where but she's like 96 and, and it, the cognitive ability is just rapidly declining so it's like a sad thing where you're like we're at the end we're at the end but the part that makes me feel bad is there's a part of me that's like what are you holding on for granny yeah, yeah. what are you holding on for go see your kids go see your ex-husband go to the light you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're not. Because I, I think that there's just a thing in human human beings that we have, we want to stay alive. But you're like, let, there's nothing, there's nothing here for you. Yeah. I see her once a year at Thanksgiving. She goes to bed at 5 p.m., wakes up at 11 a.m., naps in between then. There's really not a lot of like. She's yeah, not getting a lot done. Yeah, just stick her, you know, she doesn't want hearing aids. She's like very, she's an old Okie. She's from Oklahoma. So she's mm. very like, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to do any of that. And you're like, you know, hearing aid technology is actually pretty advanced. And then she's like, and then she'll turn around and be like, when are you in San Francisco? And I'm like, in November. And she's like, I want to come to a show. And you're like, you've never been to one of my shows. Yeah. This is when you want to go? When you're a old sack of organs and i gotta bring you down i took her to a 49ers game when she was like 87 right before they left candlestick park and it was it was a ordeal to get her to the stadium into the seats and this is when she was like this was nine years my mom ago. came to my show this year in philly i mean 89 is old yeah she had hurt her hip making her bed <sighs> Again, it's, it's like crazy. that's where it's, that's where she is. Do you remember when you were eleven and you would fall off a house? Yeah. And then you would be like, I sprained my wrist. Yes. And then now Maybe. they're like, a wind caused me. It's like that Norm yeah. McDonald joke where he talks about that bruise. And he's like, a large bruise. Big bruise. And it was caused by the wind. The wind. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, that's it's crazy. She um the thing that I resent about her is that. I have tried my whole life to be like, I'm going to be at the punchline. Like when I started working yeah. in San Francisco 10, 12 years ago, hey, I'm headlining, come down. Like I can have someone drive you down and you, you we can get dinner and you can go back up. And she'd be like, nah, she never watched anything I ever did. I don't think she knew what I did, but I would send her money. And then now it's the end. And now she's like, well, now I want to see it. And Look, I watched your Comedy Central present. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. <laughs> the joke you did about me, it could have had more tags. Okay, so the people pleasing thing. What are you afraid? What were you afraid of? Rejection, just I think basic like, rejection. Yeah, I mean, my dad, my dad left and didn't wasn't a part of my life. And I think when what that does to a kid when your when your dad just splits is it's the ultimate rejection because you're half him. Sure. So you're like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. You're rejecting your own product. Yeah. Like you made me, motherfucker. Yeah. And then now you're just gone. You don't call. You, when you do, you're like, ah, sorry, I forgot. I forgot to call. And you're and so it, I think it just creates this You assume it's your fault. Always. Yeah. And it's not. I mean, I, I know he died of alcoholism. I know the reason he left. He stole money from my mom. He did a bunch of For fucked a better up son. Shit. He found a better <laughs> Dude, son. I wish that. I wish I would have met some kid who's like, hey man. <laughs> I'm Roger. I was like, hey, like Roger. A, and he's a like, little better looking, a little taller. I was, little all -star, fitter, I was yeah. an all-star quarterback. Yeah. Gary was there every day. I'm like, yeah, I get it. I go, I, I'm glad he did. <laughs> I'm glad he found you. Tip I'm glad he cap. had you. Yeah. But it was. I think it, it was the form of rejection that, uh, and then my mom dated when I was a kid. And, and I think what that does is it's like, oh, well, I'm not enough for her even. Right. Like she's got to go find a new social yeah. life. Because there wasn't a moment where she was like, we're cool. I love you. Is it okay if I go date? She was just kind of like, hey, this is Bill. He he stays with us now. And you're like, hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm the I'm a child. So I don't know what you are or who you are. So it's like this weird feeling of like um Nobody wants you. Yeah. You're not good enough. Yeah. I remember watching this documentary about Kurt Cobain and he like his mom didn't want him to live with him. So she sent him to his dad's and his dad's like, I don't want you to live with me. Yeah. Like live in the basement. And it just created this. And I was like, 
for the first time I was like, oh, I, it wasn't that bad, but I know that feeling. I know that feeling of like, yeah, no one wants you. And my, I know my mom loves me now that I'm an adult. We have a much better relationship. Was there any sense of freedom from it or was it you didn't want it? It was constant anxiety of what right. did I do wrong? Yeah. I did something wrong. Yeah. Because your parents are supposed to be there. You know, I grew up in the suburbs and I'm around people where, oh, well, my dad is going to take me to soccer practice. And then my mom is like going to cook me cupcakes and we're going to do yeah. my birthday. And like what? And you're like, Suburb oh, shit. yeah, maybe you get molested. I mean, dude, Tops. if I would have, that would have, I think, had a much more focal point of like, <laughs> and this is where it is. I'm like, man, I just want to uncover I one, just fucking exp- simp- one button. I got rejected by perverts. <laughs> there was even a, like a, a form of rejection yeah. of not getting molested. Yeah. Where you're like, oh man. But there was a thing of like, just this feeling of like, oh, I'm not good enough for anybody to, to stay in my life. And that's when my sister, my half sister came in my life. And really was like, hey, you're cool, man. Like, you're a good kid. You're a real good kid. You're, like, funny. You're nice. Would she bring up adults? Like, the, you know, oh, these dude, adults she would be are like, not great, but just know that you're good. That was the moment. When I was 10 years old, my sister, because my mom knew how important it would be to have my sister in my life, and she was 12 years older. So she came into my life, and she was kind of like, you yeah, fuck, like, dad and that whole family, fuck them. They're alcoholics. They're They're wild. They're just feral. Just fuck them. Keep them out of your life. Your mom and her boyfriend are nuts too. Don't listen to them. How old was she at this point? I was 10. She was 22. Great. So she was kind of coming in. She was her own person. Yeah. She was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. She was another, yeah, a young adult that was just kind of like, yeah, you're a good kid. Don't worry about any of this. Just stay being you. What do you like? I was like, I like comic books and stand-up comedy. And she was like, let's watch stand-up comedy. What do you want to watch? Who do you want to watch? you know got me into music like oh you should listen to this band this band's good listen yeah. to the, got me into metallica and like a bunch of other shit yep. pearl jam and you're like oh this this rules great you're a really good person <laughs> so that was that like kind of saved me i think from 10 to 16 and did you ever turn on did it make you think of the adults in a different way it made me feel like i had a teammate yeah so it made me feel like could you oh, call her oh i could call her whenever i'd go like, visit Ugh. her i'd go stay with her and she lived in riverside so I'd go stay in Riverside with her for like a week and we'd just like kick it. And she'd be like, uh, South Park was coming out and I was super into it. And she was like, oh, well, let's go. It was like video stores. Yeah. She's like, let's go rent videos. Like, what you like Mel Brooks? Let's go watch Mel Brooks. Let's watch. So it was a very like, um, she was very like, what are your interests? Let's go to your yeah. interests. And no one had ever asked before. No. Everyone was like, oh, you're watching professional wrestling again. Or like my mom's boyfriend would be like, the 49ers, because that was the only connection I had with my dad was like yeah. through the 49ers. So I was like, oh, so I finally had a person that was like, hey, what do you like? Let's let's do what you like. We can do that. Yeah. Like, tell me music you like. So it was awesome. It was like, that. I think that, that I think saved me from it being a lot worse. Yeah. You, you need like a ally. Yeah. Or somebody that basically says like, you're then, not crazy. You know, when my dad died when I was 14, she was there to kind of be like, yeah, we knew this was going to happen. Like, it's okay. What did you think when you heard? I saw, I saw it coming. He got sick. He had alcoholism. So I saw it like. What, he had, which man? What, he what had is, cirrhosis. He had hep C that turned into cirrhosis. How does that, you just, they start feeling bad and looking back? Oh, you well, wonder like, who my gets it and who doesn't. My grandmother called my mom and she's like, hey, uh, Gary's terminal. And my mom was like, oh, shit. And so my mom sat me down. She's like, listen, we have enough money. I can either send you out to see him one last time or you can go to his funeral. What do you want to do? And I was like, I'll go see him. And my sister had not talked to him since she was 16. And she was 26 at the time. And she was like, I'll I'll go out there with you. And she went and made peace with him and stayed by his side until he died. Was he apologetic? Did he hit a buzzer? Did he hit a buzzer beater? I don't know. I think he did. With you though? No. No buzzer beater. No. He dribbled out. He dribbled <laughs> out, dude. Dribbled. He rolled the ball so the clock ran out. You know what I mean? We were like, come on, pick uh, up the ball, dude. You're fuck. like, fucking clock run out. Yeah, Threw he just, the ball up? Yeah, yeah. He did the fucking thing out the top. And <laughs> he just heard the buzzer and you're like, fuck, there was the red around the hoop. Oh, so you're like, fuck. well, there ain't ever gonna. But yeah, that was like, that was the end of that. Stood on the scorer's table. <laughs> banged on his chest. Put it his was, fucking dude. jersey out. It was it was brutal, and it, it, but you know my sister being there to be like, yeah, we fucking we knew this was coming. How demolished were you? I was pissed. 
So I was like, dude, we could have fucking fixed some stuff. Like, could I've, you have though? I think I could have told him some shit. I could have been like, man, what the fuck, dude? I loved you. You were my guy. Because like, I love my mom, but my dad was like fun as fuck. Yeah. So well, he's an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> so when I would see him, it would be a blast every time. So I wanted it to be like, dude, you were so fun. You couldn't have dadded a little. You couldn't have given me one or two dad things. Change Do you tire. think he would have said that? I think I would have said something like that. When was the last dad thing you guys did? Oh, shit. I mean, when I saw him when I was 14, he was so sick he couldn't get off the couch. He was like dying on the couch. When I was 12, he was kind of like, I, my aunt sent me out there as a surprise, and he was like full <laughs> alcoholic boat mode. He was, lived on a boat. Well, he lived near a lake. So Fuck. it was lake people. What is it with lakes and dirt bags? It, 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 it's unbelievable. It is. It's like the ocean's too classy. It is. They're like, ew, changing tides? <laughs> I need stale water that's, oh, that's dead. But I went out there and it was like an annoyance. He was like, eh, fuck. Yeah. Right, I got the kid. What do you want? You know? And he was like, I stayed with him and his girlfriend and her kids. And it just was like. For how long? Like two weeks. And I was just like, dude, this sucks. I got to say, everything you've told me about your childhood, I fucking hate. Yeah. And I, I don't, I hate it because I'm mad. Yeah. It, that's, I think that was like another thing of mine. It was like, I was angry. I was, and I did, and, but, I, but I was angry in the way of like, I wasn't, I had a mom that she would tamper that down. She'd be like, don't you fucking get mad. Yeah. She'd be like, I'd work my ass off to put you in school and give you clothes. Don't you fucking get mad. And you're like, I am mad though. Yeah. And like then a dog add, on you know, the dog whisperer who's trying not to yeah. do the thing that <laughs> you're like try not to bite the chicken. And, and then I got into therapy and my therapist was like, Yeah, hey, you're allowed to be mad. You can you can you can acknowledge that anger and like you actually have to let it go or it's gonna fucking kill you. Do you ever see the movie This Boy's Life? Too close to home. You never watched it? Too close to home. Started you knew watching inherently it. Inherently not started to watch watching it. it and was like, this is too <laughs> fucking close. He needed a father. That's the one with uh De Niro and it's DiCaprio. De Niro and DiCaprio. It's DiCaprio's too first close. lead. And it's there's a moment in the movie that I still like DiCaprio because of where they basically like are free. Yeah. And DiCaprio does like like sort of victory i have to watch it now it's I'm... like in the last 15 minutes yeah he just does a thing that's so what you do yeah when you get for like he sh is like shaking like a little kid yeah it feels i'm you know like the like as far as the freedom goes when i was finally able to like move out and stuff i was like oh i told Chappelle to watch this boy's life and he, i was like it's real and he thought i was kidding when he watched it like what do you what is this yeah i was like yeah. no that's kind of how it's it went down white angst yeah it's, well, this is what we're going for <laughs> this is where papa roach so is much from attention <laughs> well, there's not gonna be any marches for what the white kids are going no. through. just know that we're we have our own problem yeah we have we have a a, a form of suburban anxiety or just anger in a re weird way but it really like um yeah when i was a kid i wasn't allowed to be myself a lot i had i had to be for my mom, I had to be like a good yeah. soldier. Yeah. Right? That yep. was the feeling. Like, be a good soldier. Yeah. Like, soldier through this. Be good. Yeah. And then it, I was like mad because I was like, I felt rejected. So I was being a good soldier, but then I also felt like, well, I'm not getting any of the benefits of like, good job, add a boy. I yeah. wasn't getting any of those. I'd get them occasionally from my sister. Yeah, but she has to like call. Yeah. And Maybe then, on Sunday you'll get And it. then she got killed in a car accident when I was 16. And so I was just like, oh, substances. <laughs> Soder, come on. Yeah. Come on with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you, come on, this is a family podcast. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> she got killed when she was 16. I How? was 16. She was 28. She got killed in a car accident on Interstate 10. I-10. Uh, yeah. In what the, good, otherwise, yeah. and otherwise good interstate. I mean, listen, from New or from Florida all the way to- That's a straight to the shot, Pacific gang. Pacific Coast It's a straight Island. shot. You it want, is, by the way- Goes across this great land of ours. Yeah. And 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 took your sister. Yeah, and on an exit ramp, uh, two guys were having road rage, and one guy went off the ramp and rear-ended her and killed her. So it was, I mean, it was over like that. I, I need a rag to bite down on. I'm so mad. Yeah, it sucked, for, dude. For your for what happened, it really was this moment. I was so mad when it happened, but then it was like, um, 
you know when like everything's going wrong in a day and you just hit that point that you're like <laughs> what the fuck is this yeah it was that i was like okay what yeah. are you what are you fucking yeah. thank god oxycontin wasn't invented until 1990 fucking seven would you are you a substance oh guy? my god yeah i quit drinking 10 years ago but i still smoke weed and I've, I've started to get a little better handle on that but i was like once michelle got killed i was like oh so i'm just gonna get fucked up all day every day and that's just what i did that became my personality smoking weed before school smoking weed during school smoking weed after school drinking and then mushrooms just like everything just started getting fucked up as i, I was getting as fucked up as i could from 16 to 29 just like hey we'll get fucked up Let's just all go. day oh i loved it loved it was good at it i mean i got the family history fun it was a blast talk to anybody that got used to get fucked up with me they're like i was i was a it was a real good time. Never got mad. Would always just be joking, laughing. It, it, it numbed everything. Yeah. It's spending money. Is it expensive? Oh, yeah. To booze, especially in New York. When you move to New York, you mm -hmm. know, you're like, oh, I'd have bar tabs that were like, I'd be by myself dropping $115, $130, just getting fucked up, shots and beers. Start at what time? Whenever. Whatever would kick it off. If someone would be like, yeah, you want to meet here? And you're like, yeah, I I'm going to be a little late. I I'm going to get a beer next door. And then I get a beer and be like, well, I don't even in want it. this. Now I, we're in they it. They were late. Yeah. Now we're in it. And then it would just be like, and I was good at it. I was like really good at getting fucked up. Meaning you weren't. I wouldn't you, get sloppy. I wouldn't yeah. throw up. I wouldn't get mad. I wouldn't start fights. I was just really good at Same it. Same sense of humor. Same sense of humor. Joke around, do voices. I, I would, I would like. Voices, show, my God, I would. It was so much fun. This guy's the total package. It was. It was. I would put on stand up that I liked. I would like find obscure sets from people. Like I would find like, oh, have you seen Chappelle's second Def Jam? And like put it on. <laughs> or like I would find like uh, Dana. Like, do you ever watch Dana Carvey's Critics Choice? And like <laughs> this bit right here, Hicks. You know, like I would find random stuff because I loved stand up. I believe Dave's second Def Jam is wearing a sweater. I believe so. His first one is the one with the pizza, delivering pizzas in D.C. for Domino's. Mm -hmm. And I still love that it's joke. I used to deliver pizzas for Domino's. <laughs> now, one good, of you motherfuckers is going to tip kid me. He had good bits in high school. Crazy. He had a bit. Here's a bit he had in high school. Alf. Remember Alf? Yeah. It's a good thing Alf didn't land in my neighborhood. Yeah. Because two weeks later... You would have seen dudes wearing Alf skin coats. That's so funny. <laughs> in high school. I mean, yeah. That's like those jokes where you're like, God damn. And you're like, okay. Yeah. You just wrote that as a child? Yeah, like, all right. It's like Stevie Wonder when he yeah. wrote when he yeah. 16 years old calls his go, album okay. Genius. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop. Um <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. And I love I mean, that's the thing I love about stand and I think like uh, you know, stand up was the thing that I just loved. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, well, I can just watch this and obsess about it. Well, fanboy. It's, it's funny, like what you were the thing that you were experiencing where you're like abandoning yourself. Mm -hmm. You're getting abandoned. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you think, well, I should abandon myself, but you're mad at yourself and them. Yeah. And it's like a perfect way to write stand up. Yeah. Because you're like, I suck, but so right, do but they. like now yeah. I have a few things I'd like to say yeah. before you fucking the the letter to, the message to the firing squad like. yeah and i wrote i remember like when i did um my first conan i had some jokes about my mom dating it was five when my mom started dating some guy would come over i'd be like cool a new roommate <laughs> don't touch my stuff and i like called her and i was like hey, i do these jokes about you dating and i kind of like yeah i kind of make you look like a little bit of a whore but it's like funny and my mom and i was like i just just want to let you know and she was like that's hilarious she's like hey I, if i put you through it write jokes yeah she was like without her being as supportive as she was like once she because once my sister died my mom was like what am i gonna tell you she's yeah, like, like you're an adult like you've you once i was 16 i was like smoking cigarettes at home i'd get high in the garage like there was no like there was no like uh dan you know she was like i had a job it just became like a little adult yeah that would like help out around the house i'm picturing you wearing a name like a yeah, dan yeah sewn in dan <laughs> i go hi i'm dan i'm the son uh what yeah. can i do for you i'll um, mow the lawn all right well that's a lot that's a bunch of things
were you people pleasing so that people wouldn't die or abandon you? Yeah, people wouldn't leave. If, if I was nice to you, you wouldn't leave. If I gave you stuff, you wouldn't leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you were probably buying drinks all the time. All the time. And, yeah. Let me get a... Yeah, uh, I'd, buy, I'd buy weed. Do you want to fucking smoke? I got smoke. You'd buy weed. I'll buy an eighth, you know, and be like, oh, yeah. no, fucking, let's roll Would you up. give people like a to-go bag? Yeah, you'd be like, oh, you want a nug? Here, you can go. That was totally my personality when I was younger. Like, oh, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, and you, you never thought I'm getting, I'm playing myself? Not until I was older. When that kicked in, that kind of tapped into the anger. So you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Why the fuck? And I started resenting that. And then it was like, Giannis Papas was like, you need to go to therapy. The <laughs> fact that you are not in therapy is a danger to people around you. And then I started going to therapy and I was like, oh. You were snapping at people? Because you realize no to... one's making you people, please. Yeah, it was me. So I started. But then you kind of, your brain tells you they're making you. Well, here's it's the like, thing. My they're mom, not making you. My mom tried to get me in therapy when I was young, when I was like 10, because I started getting like a little violent towards people. My mom was like, we should, should probably put them in therapy. Didn't work didn't take who I, told you which therapist said you could be angry different therapist the one i have as an adult oh so you weren't angry no until like you were 30 something uh, tw mid 20s late 20s um but i remember going to therapy with this guy tom and i just was like yeah how are we gonna get through this so i can go home i was like 10 i want to go home and watch cartoons i don't want to talk to you you dork to come to the office you got a sweater vest on you fucking dork get out of my face it was like that kind of energy and then when my sister died i was entered into a trial to do actually you talked about this with josh homie the uh e emdr emdr yeah uh, at denver university they were trying it and i was a trial when i was 16 but i was super fucked up all the yeah time. so I, it didn't yeah. work but they did the with the lights yeah they tried to like oh you processed a lot of trauma recently we're going to try to we got fresh trauma we got fresh <laughs> fresh catch but they didn't know that i was smoking a blunt in my car yeah in the in the parking lot and then coming in being like man yeah, genie doesn't want to date me <laughs> and they're like what we want to talk about your sister dying i was like nah, i don't want to nah, talk about that is stupid yeah we're not talking it's about good. that she's gay so yeah hey, stop being you're fucking lame so it really became like when i was older i finally got a therapist that was like you want to work on this stuff and i was like yeah i think i need to and then it's been 12 years and i could tell you my life has improved 200 percent. it's a lot yeah it's a lot it's like those are sales numbers 200 yeah. percent. those are like 100 percent is complete that's how you get a you're going to two you you're get getting a promotion dude. yeah 200 yeah. percent yeah. year over year guys you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets for your next big event and game time is the fastest easiest way to buy tickets to all sports music comedy and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. All right, let's go. Who do we got? We've got the Foo Fighters. Oh, that's next year. Yeah, get on that. That's next August. You should start waiting in line now. It's next August 9th, so with Game Time, you could, you could just wait until that day. So you have about a year on that show. And then you go on Game Time because they've, they've uh, last-minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Owl City at the House of Blues here in LA or maybe Anaheim. Owl City has a hit. It was on my iPod. I'm, I'm an older gentleman. I had an iPod. And uh, we'd put music on there and it was, uh, you couldn't believe it. At one point, I remember I had an MP3 player with a hundred songs and you couldn't tell me nothing. There's a band called Cradle of Filth and they're playing tonight at the Belasco where I shot blocks and three mics. Uh, Cradle of Filth, of course, is something your grandfather would call your your dirty bedroom, or your grandmother would call your mind. The Pretenders, Chrissy Hind, I believe. She's here. Uh, we've got some comedy. Jim Jeffries this Saturday at the somewhere, City National. Jim Jeffries, one of the one of the greats. He's We've exchanged texts about him doing this podcast, and it seems like it's a grudging yes. Chrissy D. Chrissy uh, DiStefano or DiStefano, still don't know. I think it's DiStefano. He's going to be at the Brea Improv next weekend. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BLOCKS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms applies. Again, create an account and redeem code BLOCKS for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. 
Lowest price guaranteed. Hi. What do you call a person who speaks three languages? Trilingual. Someone who speaks two? Bilingual. Someone who speaks one? American. Only 22% of Americans speak a language other than English at home. Start learning a new language this fall and be the exception, not the rule, because with Babbel, you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. This fall, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. You know I love Mexico City. You know I love Cabo right? You know that about me. Now that I've been messing with Babbel, I'm a little faster with my don days and my por favors, et cetera, et cetera. I can say more than that, but I don't want to, you know, flex too hard. You know what I mean? Whenever I use Babbel, I'm trying to get to the point where I can just quickly mumble it the way I would in English, which is good. And then you, uh, don days, like just very, very simple, like a native speaker would speak it. It helps you get there faster. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash B-L-O-C-K-S spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash blocks. Rules and restrictions may apply. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. All right, look, I can't think of a thing we talk about more than therapy. More, We talk about therapy more than Chappelle show, which is hard to do. You know what I like about therapy? You get to listen to yourself through the ears of someone else. You get to listen to yourself through the ears of yourself. You get to consider what you're doing. You get to uh, think about the kind of things you're uh, traps you're falling into emotionally and personally it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries it empowers you to be the best version of yourself it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma therapy is great you know i think it's great if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash N-E-A-L to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash N-E-A-L. BetterHelp. You have on here fear of failure. That was stand-up. That was like, I loved it so much that when I started stand-up, I was like, I cannot fail at this. And I think that's failing at stand-up is a part of it. Like, remember how I was telling you I was doing jokes that I didn't think were... Yeah. It was because I wasn't willing to fail to do the stuff that I wanted to do. Like, I would do something that I liked and it wouldn't work. I'm like, well, I'm, I, won't, I won't touch that again. Yeah. Instead of being like, no, no, no. Yeah. There is something here. And then now, that's kind of how I approach all my stand-up. It's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, because you're like, this is funny. And then Well, it's just like, embarrassing when you're like when you have portions that work and portions that don't and you don't know why they don't that's but the hard part you believe in it right but you don't know why you're like i was telling somebody you write a bit and it's got like six jokes in it and then three of them work and then that becomes the joke yeah but you never forget about the six bit version absolutely and you'll always be a little pissed that you couldn't get the six bit version out to the people i uh, i went and saw colin quinn run his hour and i was talking to him after and we were talking about when friends give you a line and then that line hits the hardest mm -hmm. and then you're on stage and you're like i don't even want to do this line anymore yeah. this isn't my line yeah. yeah but they don't know they have no idea they have no idea but well, you if you're know. the real ones start to think it's theirs yeah if you're a real g you just go oh this, this is my you just if you're really crazy enough, I you like, just get to the point where you go. I've got, did he? Uh, 
I've got I, no. I, he kind of started, and I finished it. I've got two bits where like there's two bits that I still do that like one bit Shane Gillis gave me a tag and it fucking murders, and one bit Michelle Wolf gave me a tag yeah. and it murders. And every time I do those bits, I go, "Well, that was Michelle. This isn't even me. That's not even me. That was Shane. Shane yeah. gave me that line. Yeah, that line works because it's fucking Shane. You yeah. know, and you're like, and I kind of revert back to that like, I fucking suck. This this isn't. You know, and then you're afraid of failing. So there's like this weird, like, I've got to do this, but I'm also like, I can't fail at this. And then once I started accepting failure and being like, yeah, it's just, you fail. So what, dude? Like, it's not the end it's of the world. It's just panning for gold. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's it's just, there's just a high. It's cooking. Attrition sometimes, rate. Sometimes yeah. dishes are going to come out not the way. Yeah. Because the oven was a little too hot or something. And you're like, you just let it go. Yeah. Cook the next thing. No. I know. It's like imagine going to the to the plate of a restaurant if you're the chef and you're like, I can do this better. And they're like, I just want to eat it. I don't care. And you're like, yeah. oh, I can fix it. Well, the, yeah. And then you're annoying. Yeah. But the fear of failure, I think, is a good North Star. I mean, I don't I think like you sh there should be when people aren't competitive in stand up or I'm like, good luck. I think um, stand up in a way is like athletics for people who aren't athletic yeah because you're like oh this gives me the feeling of how competition must feel for top athletes where you're like oh, i gotta refine i've got to like do bring in different stuff you know when you hear about like lebron doing different training exercises to stay on top of his game you're like comics need to do that we yeah. need to like you need to go read something you've never read or go i remember burr one time in an interview was like put yourself in uncomfortable situations because your sense of humor will react to that and you're like oh yeah that makes real sense. An uncomfortable situation, you'll be like, you'll be like, why am I doing this? And then you're like, oh, that could be a bit. And so it like helps you along being like uh, uncomfortable and failing. Yeah, I don't, I think there's nothing wrong with it. A fear yeah. of failure, I think it's like. It's the thing that I am almost over and I'm glad. more, Even more than people pleasing is like, I'm happy I'm coming to the end of my fear of failure. It's just a big part of it. Yeah, but like it'll always be there, but it won't be a driving force. It'll be the thing that's like subtly in the background. Like I realize it's there, but I think for a long time it was like the main thing of like, just don't fail. Just go out and kill and pander if you have to. Yeah. And then you're done and you feel gross. You're like, ah, I didn't need to well, do that. Well, just nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, uh, but if you take a chance on something you believe in and it fails it's a little more organic of a failure where you're like all right well yeah well yeah I'll still it's, like, it. it's all the same hole that's what yeah. i always say it's like <laughs> it all the same hole like yeah, yeah. the good idea and the bad idea came out of the same hole like i'm yeah. not gonna condemn the hole yeah it's a beautiful little fucking late nice. with labia <laughs> fear of death i mean that's why just <laughs> why do you why think why? why do you think it was just like man there was this thing of um my mind goes to like fear of death in a way that I didn't even realize until Katie one time was like, are you thinking about dying? Did you like see my face and be like, are you thinking about death? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I have like a pain right here and I think it's cancer and I'm probably going to die. And she was like, what's up, dude? So you're just going to live your whole life and then at the end be like, oh, I died. And the whole time I was worried about dying. And you're like, oh, yeah. What do you think's going to happen? I'm not going to. When I'm you not, die. I think like I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do I'm not going to get to the point where I wanted to get as a person. That's what I'm afraid of. Like, I'm not going to get to be who I was hoping to be, I guess, in my mind of like letting go of the fear of failure, letting go of the people pleasing. Like, I'm afraid I'll die before I can kind of similarly to how I felt with my dad when he died. Like, oh, I, I can't get a chance to correct that. I can't get a chance to do it better. I can't get a chance to make it more than it was you know i uh, i will imbibe some plant medicine from time to time yeah and uh, i don't like to talk about it but yeah. uh uh but i had the thought yesterday i did maybe let's say i did some stuff Sunday, yeah where i had the thought like i think maybe the point of life like the mission is to love yourself yeah like that's maybe the mission i really think there's a lot of like like what's the point of life and it's like to enjoy being yourself. okay with yes and being yeah. okay with yourself and i, I that's why I'm, I'm afraid because i'm close to it and i'm a cl i'm close to like 
the the wisest thing I've ever heard anybody say was I did Opie and Anthony with Mike Tyson and he was on there and um you know it's Mike Mike Tyson he's like been through so much shit yeah and we were talking about people booing I was like oh when you're doing stand up and one or two people are just giving you nothing and you're like the whole room's laughing why aren't you laughing and Mike Tyson was like I feel that way when I walk to the ring a couple people are booing me and I'm like why are you booing me you don't know me and then Mike Tyson was like it's a bad neighborhood up here and you're all by yourself. And you're like, yeah. So you're trying to clean up that neighborhood to enjoy where, you know, to yeah. be by yourself. And it is, you're like, you're trying to enjoy yourself in this world. And I, and I asked my therapist, I'm like, are there people that do that? And he's like, yeah, most, most people are okay with themselves. And you're like, fuck, really? Is that true? I just don't, I don't, when he said it, I didn't believe him. Cause I was like, you're telling me there's all these people walking around just going like, I'm pretty fucking great. I don't think there's a lot of people. He made, he made me feel like it was like. What percentage do you think it is? If you want my dead honest opinion. What percentage of people 20%. are walking around thinking they're okay? Okay. That's, that's how I, I would, feel. I, that would be the top end to me. The way I, I was going to say 15. Yeah. I would say around there. 15 to 20%. The way I see the internet people getting angry about stuff the way that like they're so everyone's so easily divisible now by by hitting certain things and like how good people are at marketing uh anger and all mm -hmm. that shit to get you to like i think it makes me think 20 percent. yeah because they can hit that like because you can't uh appeal to people that are okay with themselves yeah but the problem with people that are okay with themselves is that they're they're impervious to marketing you know who is okay with themselves in the world you know those friends of yours that were funnier than comics you knew but they never got into yeah. stand-up those are the people i think of that they're like yeah i don't my buddy who's like super funny but he's yeah. just an electrician he's like yeah i don't need to go do that i'm okay with i know i'm funny wait you think you're enough yeah that's you're it walking you're like, around thinking you're enough so you're just okay with everything you say you don't need people applauding and what yeah and, and to me that's like a superpower you don't wake up every day down 10 points yeah you don't enter yeah. every conversation every every down morning two is a half time down fucking yeah. two touchdowns every that's not your experience sir but the more i'm okay with myself the more i enjoy all the stuff that i do and so it's like um it feels like i'm going down the right path sometimes when you're like oh i really like i'm starting to do stuff that's some people don't understand, but then I'm like, oh, but it makes me feel good. What kind of stuff? Leaving the bonfire was a weird one because uh, I loved doing that radio Bonfire's show. With the Sirius radio. XM, still on Monday Monday through Thursday on Faction Talk 103, uh, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern. But it was, a, it was a thing that I built that I loved that I felt like, oh, I want to go do other stuff. But it, the people pleaser in me was like, well, you can't leave this. You built this. This is a family. You can't leave. And then I was like, but I, I, I want to. I want. I, you know, I want to go just do stand up. I, I want to write cartoons. I want to like write stuff. There was just a bunch of stuff that I wanted to do. And it was like letting down Jay, who's one of my closest friends. Yeah. It was like letting down the crew, which I had worked with closely for eight years. And so it was like, it was confronting that people pleasing that like, there can be people that aren't happy, including my friend Jay and including yeah. my, my friends that work on the show. They're not going to be happy. And that was really fucking hard. It took me, you know, I was having panic attacks about it. I was having like losing sleep, talking about it in therapy. And then finally I said it to Jay and I was like, sometimes you just have to trust that your friends love you. And Jay was like, yeah, dude, if you want to leave, you've always said that. He's like, you've always said you didn't want to do this forever. So that's fine. And it was weird having that, having like a friend be like, I see you and yeah. you're okay. And you're yeah. like, so all that was for nothing. And then that helped me on the next thing be like, I'm probably having all this anxiety for nothing. We're just flying past everyone else's windshield. Yeah. It's this thing. We think people are trying to like run us over. We're like central yeah. in everyone's yeah. mind. Yeah. We're not. We're barely in the periphery. The best analogy I heard was Gary Goldman said, do you remember in school when you would go to the wrong classroom and you'd open the door and there'd be a class in there and you'd be like, oh, sorry, and you'd shut the door and you'd be mortified? Yeah. And you'd be walking down the hall and you'd be like, that whole classroom is thinking about me. No one was thinking about you. Yeah. Everyone, the door opened, You sh they shut and they were like, all right, back to yeah. War of 1812. They didn't think yeah. about you. When I heard that analogy, I was like, 
that makes so much sense in my head because I'm always like that classroom hates me. Yeah. Everyone in that classroom is mad at me for opening that door. They don't give a shit. Yeah, the assumption that they're like, Ugh, I can't believe you went to the wrong classroom. I would never do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're <laughs> Very like, oh, understandable f- thing. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. So that just is like all that stuff, the more and more I work on, the more I'm like, oh, they don't care. No one cares. And what do you, so the death thing, what do you think is going to happen to your spirit and soul when you die if you believe in such a thing i I mean i'm agnostic i believe that um i believe that humans don't know i think we're all this is such such a complicated thing and our brains are so simple that i i think it's just like that that's comforting that i'm like i don't know but we'll find out yeah you know i don't uh i don't think that i know I don't think I'm like, well, you go to heaven and it's a nice, bright it's, place. It's Beverly Hills. Yeah. And it's clouds. There's shrubs. Yeah. And nice everyone, shrubs. Everyone's nice. It's just, I think, you know, I think you return to a collective consciousness that you're kind of like, I was a piece of, you know, I was fractured and now I'm whole. Uh, that's what I hope. I think that's what I hope. And what do you, and what's the, the what, so when you fear, it's, so the peace. fear of death is not, if just feeling like you you get an incomplete you know what my fear of death is my fear of leaving the people behind because i got left behind ah okay so i feel there's a clip of keanu reeves saying that i think on colbert where he was like all i know about death is that i know that the ones who love us will miss us and i was like damn that is you know that is pretty fucking accurate i think i'm like uh i don't want to leave people behind because i'm a people pleaser so it ties into the fear of death of like, I don't want you to be sad if I'm gone. You know, I won't yeah. know. I'll be a big orb of light. I'll, I'll return to the. To but the meanwhile, you won't give your grandmother that. You're like, get the fuck out of here. Go to the light. Get the fuck. What the fuck are you doing? Well, for Beat her. It. Well, for her, I, you know, it brings up the resentment and the anger I had of like, well, where were you taking care yeah. of me when I was a kid? Where were you telling? Why don't you tell my dad to call me? Why don't you tell my dad to pay a little child support? Why don't you tell my dad to fucking get his shit together? Well, it's funny. Don't you wish that we could get the revenge satisfaction or like the passive aggressive, the positive revenge? I already know what you're saying. Like the immediate- positive revenge yeah. points. Like, yeah. hey, D- Granny, do you see what I'm doing? Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you see that? Like, it's this crazy is how you're a saying that because do this? I don't think I've ever been able to put my feelings into words like that. But positive revenge is the exact fucking feeling I have with her when I go like, "You don't know what I do. I'm really good at what I do, and I'm fucking taking care of you with what I do. With none of our other family members stepped up. No, I stepped the fuck up. My aunt, her daughter, was dying of cancer, and she was like, "You got to take care of grandma." And I was like, and for 15 years, I've taken care of her. And that was a conversation I had with my mom today where she was like, Dan, you got to let go. You can't take care of her enough. But it was like, I wanted that positive revenge. Yeah. I wanted that like, hey, remember when your fucking kid bailed out on his family? Well, guess who's not doing that? Guess who's going above and beyond that? And then I still don't. Right. And it's but, still. And she's never going to go. She's never going to hit the buzzer beater of like. It would be sick, though. It would be the sickest buzzer if, beater. If, if it'd she be grabbed fucking, her hand, she was like, you fucking rock that <laughs> shit. And I'm like, I love you, Nana. <laughs> and, then like, and you won't give it to yourself. Nah. That's the problem is like when we do the positive revenge uh, missions. The, the fantasy. We don't yeah. ever go, you know what? You squared that circle and you're a good person yeah you, know. you just go like this motherfuckers yeah. i just continue, don't appreciate a goddamn continue thing. to feel sorry for myself yeah in fact feel more sorry for yeah. yourself because now because now you're a double I did victim. The right thing and yeah <laughs> and you're not even getting the like attaboy yeah you're getting like the and i did this and, and you still fucking didn't do that but yeah. it is uh it's a thing that like yeah positive revenge hmm. intimacy issues yeah man I was afraid of letting people in for a very long time. What does that mean? Uh, what does that look like? I'll let you in. There's a there's a sec there's a there's a VIP section you can't get into. Sorry, we're not letting people backstage. No, I get it. So sorry, you don't have to see on the right wristband. You don't have the right wristband. Sorry, you don't have the credentials. Yep, I can truly say, and I know this is corny. Katie is the first person I've let in. Katie is the first person that I've ever been with. I think f- truly friend or anybody family member that i've been like 
come and take a look inside. And she went in. She went, Jesus Christ, you all right? It's good. This place is falling apart. And you're like, I don't, don't yeah, let anybody it's know. Fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It runs. I got a sleeping bag in the corner. <laughs> yeah. it's good. But like letting her in was like it. I, I mean, I feel so bad for everyone I dated before. That, but it wasn't right. And I think maybe in my yeah. mind, I subconsciously, I picked that person knowing like, well, they'll only get this far. They won't have. And it, it's entirely possible you weren't getting into their VIP either. No. And and this was like the first person I've let in that I was like, like, you know, key in the door. You're like, you sure you want to see what this? What made you let her in? Being together during COVID. Being together during COVID and her, us having arguments and us having disagreements where finally she was like, what is it? Why are you not letting me in? And then finally you're like, all right, here it is. And then once I let her in, there wasn't this like, this was like oh yeah you're i love you what were you arguing about that she would be like what she'd be like you seem issue? distant you seem like you can like like she'd be like i'm talking to you but then it feels like you just are like not you and i'm like yeah because i don't want to do that and she'd be like why and i'd be like you'd be talking about something emotional yeah we'd be like it like i would do something where she'd be like it seems so out of character for you to do that like were you not thinking and i was like no i was thinking you know and i just i wouldn't admit that it was like, well, it's hard for me to do this, like you, admitting a fault. Like, I'm scared. I don't want you to, like, if I let you in, I'm going to worry you're you're going to die all the time. It's relating back to the fear of death. Like, if I let you in, the people I loved when I was younger. You're a black widow. <laughs> Let's be honest. You're yeah. a jinx. What's a, yeah. You're a jinx. That's what I worried. I mean, you worry about it completely because I'm like, my. I think that's what my sister's death did. It was like, oh, cool. So. Cause she was, she was like kind of the only other person I've ever really like been like, oh come on in. Cause when I did let her in, it was all it was all positive, and she was like, oh you're a good kid, everything's going all right. And then she died, and I was like, well if you let someone in that room, they die. Yeah. And so it was like, well I don't want, I can't lose you. I, I cherish you too much. And then she finally she's like, you gotta let me in. And then I let her in. And I was like, oh okay, this is, I'm still, but I'm still like. Don't you fucking die. And I still worry about it. You ever wear a helmet a couple days a week, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I bubble boy her. <laughs> I'm like, you got to get in this bubble. You can't go nowhere. I mean, that's like, I didn't know I had intimacy problems. Well, the funny thing is when you're like, you let her in and it's like, what, what's the dilapidation? The yeah. dilapidation is just, you just had a rough yeah. time. It, was, it wasn't your fault. Like, life wasn't very kind. So, yeah. but the idea that you're like, ugh. You're not gonna. It's like what you didn't do anything. People you didn't please. murder. It's it. like you a mix of people pleasing and all that stuff. You're like, yeah. <clears throat> you almost feel like you're burdening them. Like I felt like I was burdening her. Like, hey, I know I got all this shit from when I was a kid and like all these issues. Sorry, you know. And she's like, yeah, dude, I love you. This is what love is. Like, I'll I'll help you clean up. Yeah, it's like cleaning up after a party. Yeah, that she wasn't at. You're like, hey, this place got trashed. But it's not even. It's just ha It's just emotional habits. It's not. What is she cleaning up? I don't know. I don't. That's just how it felt. It felt like ah, there's a bunch of shit. And she'd yeah. be like, I don't think there is. I think you're all right. And that kind of made me realize, like, all haven't right. you realized the older you've gotten, like everyone has their package? Yeah. And you just you that's just, some th that's, some are bigger than others, but. That's kinda been, they're not like the ones you think like oh you have a small uh grief package and then you realize like no it's just as big as mine yeah i you know that was always the thing where like uh my therapist was like yeah you had a tough childhood and i was like no i didn't I they're doing fine. a new grief package drop on grand theft auto dude i love it it's a dude, dlc yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. dead it's a dead dad drop yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get it right now playstation <laughs> store it uh it really does feel like uh you see other people's problems and you're like i wouldn't want that yeah. You're like, yeah, I wouldn't fuck with that at all. And then people are like, well, I wouldn't fuck with yours. And you're like, oh, so that's how we're all, we all have our own things where you're like, yeah, it's just yours we'll aren't mine, but I don't think I'm, I don't think mine are especially bad or mine are, you know, I talked to Vecchione about that all the time. He had a very military, like a, a militant father. Hmm. And I was like, that you couldn't tell by his haircut. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, that would break me. And he's like, see, that would break me just having a single mom and all these random guys coming in. And I was like, oh, that was fine though. Like I was, you get used to it you get used to it and he's like oh i got used to my dad i love my dad. and i'm like oh yeah so it was just like kind of comparing and contrasting you realize like as you get older you're like oh everyone's got their own shit everyone's carrying around their own shit and a yeah. lot of times when you talk to someone about their shit they warm up to, like that's a organic version of people pleasing is being like well what's your shit i'll talk to you about your shit and they're like thanks yeah and there's this moment of like oh 
okay. And you're like, I can see this is helping you talk about your shit. Yeah, like the shame around it, I just think is, I hope it ends. I mean, that I think is absolutely our parents' generation of being like, stuff it down, shut the fuck up. You know what it is, is uh, they didn't, I think we have too much individualism now. Yeah. They didn't have any. They were like, you're part of this. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're part. Of, don't don't make waves. Don't, don't make waves. Don't don't and call ours attention to yourself. Like, Your waves are the uh, biggest. My waves are amazing. <laughs> I am an ocean, and you're like, no, you're not. You're you a lake. Are so uh, everything I think and feel is incredible and unique. Yeah. We over we overcorrected from our parents' generation. Hopefully, there's nothing worse than it just being annoying. Yeah, but I also think like all of the conspirituality shit. Yeah, is directly tied to that like i have my own thoughts about vaccines and i have my own because i have i read one thing and i heard a podcast and now i anything anything there's no if i like it it's true like our soldiers now are like um war gives me anxiety yeah and they're like yeah that's what it does yeah that's what you're a soldier but even like comedians being like the audience is being mean it's like well no they're just not saying something funny yeah so just you know yes um anxiety i mean dude i didn't realize how anxious i was until i started dating katie because she are you like, like a, a foot popper I'm, I'm kind of like a I sh- i shut down and i try to like like she'll sh- she gave me the example of when we're out in public i try to make sure every- that she's okay everyone's okay and she's like hey enjoy yourself we're at a ball game we're at a concert like you don't have to con- you can just go you can just be a part of it but i'd be like hup, 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 hup. And then I can't talk. Like she can hear my breathing. We'll we'll play video games sometimes and we'll both be on a headset and she'll hear my breathing and she'll be like, dude, relax. Cause I'll be like, it's like, I don't even know I'm being anxious. I just like go into this stage where I'm like, like what kind of game? Like Rocket League, something ridiculous. Something where we're literally playing to relax and I'm getting anxious because I want to do well. Because it's, again, it's the people pleasing. It's the fucking all this, like, adding up. I didn't realize that it was making me so anxious. Also, I'm a pothead, so I thought I was, like... Cool. Potheads are the most anxious people, by and large, I've been, I've been really the dis- planet. I've been really discovering that in the last, like, two months. And I remember years ago, I dated this girl, and she was like, you know, you act like a pothead, like, you're all... She's like, I've never seen someone that flips out as much as you do, and you're like yeah i do i'm and then katie one time was like well because you couch it as like you're fucking harsh in my mellow man yeah. it's like no i'm not <laughs> yeah, you're, you're constantly <laughs> on edge yeah, yeah. you're constantly shaking a yeah. little bit even after you've smoked weed yeah it, and now even more so yeah because it, it went it went sideways there but i had never had she was the first person in my life that put the word anxiety on it where she was like you know how anxious you are and i was like babe i'm a <laughs> chill ass stoner and she's like no you're a fucking wreck and then i started being like i am and then she noticed it and now was, what are you gonna do you can't smoke it weed ain't gonna help well now it's even better just like learning how to relax naturally and be yeah like, you know i meditate now there's yep. just like a lot of stuff that i do where i'm like pussy, oh that pussy yeah i'm a okay. big old puss a big old do my breaths in the morning kind of puss but I didn't notice it with my stand up until she noticed it. I did. Shane Gillis was, uh, did like five sold out shows at Caroline's. And he was like, dude, do you guess it? Like, it'd be awesome. Just come in and drop in. And I'd be like, I'd fucking love to. This is all, you know, it's, it's cool. It's my friend's show. It's all sold out. No stakes for me. I'm just yeah. a surprise guest. And I went up there and I was fucking around. I'm just having a great time, legitimately having fun. And then I went into my bits and I was doing it like this and I, but in my head, I'm like, oh, it's time to do the bits. Now I got to really, now I'm going to kill, you know, now I'm going to go into it. And the jokes weren't as working as well as I was when I was like making fun of people and just fucking around. And I got off stage and Katie was like, why'd you get so anxious? And I was like, what do you mean? I did my bits. And she was like, dude, you were killing. And then you went into like, hopped up. Did you ever go to here? I went to here and then I did this. And I was like, oh, that was pure anxiety pure anxiety of like i have to do well because in my head i'm like shane's fans are like this guy sucks yeah and i'm like no but i was I, you know and so it's that anxiety of like i'm uh, like robotic almost and so now i'm aware of that every time i'm on stage i'm like hey dude this isn't a big deal this is fun yeah like, relax chill out 
you don't have to do well. Yeah. You, you can do okay. And if you have fun, watching comedians that have fun on stage made me realize how much I'm not having fun on stage. Like Chappelle, you watch Chappelle on stage and you're like, oh man. Never seen him. Yeah. <laughs> but he, just the way he flows, yeah. the way he's like, oh, this is all so much fun. I see that with like Sean Patton. I see that with uh, Ali Sadiq. Like Ali Sadiq, I just watch him and I'm like, this is such a guy that's just in it. He's just present, he's in it, and he's having fun. Same with Shane. Yeah. And I watch him and I'm like, Nate, I'm like, damn, you guys are all just having a blast. And I'm up there like this. <laughs> yeah you know i'm just like yeah fucking get out of me well it's hard if you have to i not like have memorization issues but like i want to remember my bits are good yeah and i like doing them yeah and i, I like when they work I, and i can do crowd work that's funny and it's i just don't see it as more valuable than my bits but i know what you mean but i always used to watch patrice and big J. And they do this thing where it's all one thing. Like I'll watch yeah. Big J and he'll like talk to somebody, but then he goes into like a long bit and you're like, that was so fucking cool. That was so cool to watch because I kind of knew what was the pre-planned stuff. Yeah. But how you got there organic, it just looked so smooth. Yeah. And I love that. And I realized that I was like, are you guys having a good night? Good. <laughs> Dating is very difficult with apps. And you're like, what the yeah. fuck, dude? Just yeah. relax. Yeah. But that was that's all tied to the anxiety that's all tied to like i'm anxious like i need to like and i it's a people pleasing feel of fear of failure well okay so tell me what you've done to uh improve all these things i don't smoke weed before i go on stage i remind myself that this is so much fucking but fun. i'm talking about in life not just this not just anxiety it's like uh similarly i kind of am like dude i look around and i'm like I remember being a waiter. I remember working at Bed Bath & Beyond. I remember working at all these places where I was like, dude, if I could just do stand-up as a job, mm -hmm. that would be the shit. And now I get to, so why is there any anxiety? Why is there, like, I, I, Dana Gould had this speech in 2014 at Just For Laughs, and it's, um, you can find it. Someone wrote it out, and I go back and I read it, and it's very helpful because he basically gives the point of, like, Hey, if you're doing comedy, you made it. Yeah. This is such a hard job to be able to do for a living that if you can do it for a living, it's there. Now anything else is just extra. That thing that you want, you're actually doing it right now. Like up or down or whatever. If you get to be a comedian, you got to do it. Bigger than that? What's so therapy helped you? Yeah. Therapy, meditating, being able to be okay Stone with Stone DMDR. 16 year old stone emdr swatted that shit i might want to try that again might want to try that again but i really feel like um being okay with who i am and just being like you're not going to be this ideal version of yourself you're but be okay with who you are faults and all it's like it's like you know when when you have a car that kind of sucked before you had money mm -hmm. and you had a car that kind of sucked but it ran yeah and you knew what sucked about it like the timing belt slips a little bit but it's fine that's kind of how you treat yourself. Just yeah. like, oh yeah. Sometimes this it doesn't go the fastest, but it, it gets me there. And I kind of know where everything is. I kind of can get in the driver's seat and, and futz around. What's the upside of all of your problems? Because I, I always focus on the downside. I'm like, there's a lot of upside to all of my issues. I think it's giving me perspective. I think it gives me perspective that my empathy is I, I have an ability to be empathetic on a level that I'm like, well, if I hate me, what do you, you know? Like I hate yeah. myself. So if you hate yourself, we can, I can, I can kind of tell you, well, what do you don't like about yourself? Cause I like a lot of stuff. Cause I like most people. Yeah. I like individuals. When I meet individuals, I can always find something where I'm like, oh, that's fun. That's like a cool thing that you do. And so I think I have the ability to empathize with people on a level where I'm like, um, I think I'm a, a sweet person. I think I'm, uh, I think my mom's very sweet. I think I'm very I think I'm very lucky to have had that and I think it influenced me to be sweeter and more empathetic towards people. Like I can say all this shit about my grandmother, but the fact of the matter is, is I love her very much and I want her to be safe and comfortable because I love her. She's my grandmother. But I can't ignore all the other stuff that happened and that helps me like myself better. 
is being like, you can be mad at her. You can even get a little terse with her. You can get a little tense and be like, hey, I'm going to put you in a home. But it's because I love you. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this like, you're going to listen to me because I'm fucking sick of it. It's that we have that revenge voice where you're like, oh, I have the power now. But in reality, you're like, hey, what helps me is being like, I love you and I'm scared. So help me help you so I can love you cleaner. So when you do pass on, I can feel at peace about it and be like, I really helped and I loved you and I hope wherever you go after this life, you're okay. Yeah, like as much as it's revenge, it's also like there's a right thing to do. I like I like, and I doing would like the right to thing. do the right thing yeah. kind for me. Doing the right thing to I me. I wish I gave myself more credit for it. Yeah, that's exactly it. In my it. soul, but yeah, like. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because it's like, I, I like doing the right thing. It feels good. And I need to embrace that more of being like, I did what I thought was right. And I'm at peace with that. That, that brings me a little form of justice of being like, I, 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 did, I did what I thought was good. And, and sometimes it'll be wrong. But if I'm, if I'm trying by going by my gut, I think I'll be all right. Yeah, it's a better, it's like goodness for its own sake. And I, I want to have fun. This is a cool, yeah. I have a cool life. L- incredible, I've, incredibly lucky. I've been in, incredibly lucky. I've been incredibly lucky f- for a lot of reasons. But uh, I like enjoying that. And like, you know, I was telling Bert Kreischer, I just did his podcast. And I was telling Bert, one of the things Why? I like. <laughs> but one of the things is like, I see him enjoy his life. And I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. Like, that's cool to like turn around and be like, it's fucking. And I have those moments yeah. where I'm like, dude. I'm staying at a nice hotel in LA. Yeah. I get to go. I mean, you know, before the cameras were rolling, dude, you know how obsessed with you and Chappelle I was when I was 20? When, when I found out you guys got Chappelle show, I was the guy that was like, my favorite band is about to be the biggest band in the world because I already knew about Half Baked. Yeah. And I was a, a diehard Chappelle fan. And I was like, you guys don't know. And then it blew up. And then I became a hipster. And I was like, yeah, you guys are yelling Rick James, but I was there. Uh, just say it out. Yeah, I remember his HBO uh, <laughs> half hour one night stand when he opened with the Alcatraz bit. So. You probably don't even know that song. And then the one time I met Chappelle, I was still drinking and I just like avalanched him with all these old bits that he hadn't done on a special. And he was like, man, you really know my act, <laughs> you know, in a way of yeah. being like, I'm being creepy. <laughs> like, yeah. I had to pull back. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when you originally did what white people eat and uh, you said stovetop was like crack for white people because it divides our families? He's like, and he would be like, I don't remember ever saying that. <laughs> and then I'm like, uh-huh. But yeah. it, it is like, man, I, I it's it's cool. Like this is, yeah, this I is agree. so I agree, fucking, like not, I don't, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's just I, like cool. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, especially in this business of this business, a lot of times can turn into a, a comparison yeah. where you're watching other people. But I've in the last since I saw you last have really learned to genuinely be happy for my friends. Yeah. In a way that's like, fuck yeah, Nate, you selling out arenas. Awesome. Shane is on his way to be in the next Louie. Like there's, there's so much stuff where I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, go, yeah. go. Like Norman and Marill and all my friends yeah. that are doing well, I'm like, fucking go, dude. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, who should? Yeah. It's like, yeah, them. Yeah, them. They're, they're all great. You're watching so. your friends and you're like, go, dude. Yeah. This is great. Go win. Yeah. And then it makes your wins feel better because you're like, hey, we're all, this yeah, is all it's cool. for its own sake. Yeah. It's again, you're doing, you, you want to be supportive for its own sake, but you also want, you hope it's reciprocated. You hope it is. Yeah. It, when you expect it is when shit gets sour. Is yeah. when you're like, I expect you to do that. But when when it comes through naturally, like a like a natural sweetener and like a fruit or something, you're like, that was very enjoyable and healthy. Dan Soder, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.